Hey, Booktube, Sean here. The National Book Award is just announced the long list for the National Book Award for Fiction. And I thought I'd film a reaction to it. I'm about to go in and see what the 10 books are. Uh, the link from the article in the New Yorker right now does not have a picture attached to it, but it says this year's long list includes eight fiction debuts. So this should be exciting. I'm a big fan of the National Book Award, even though I've really only read one winner. I try to read some of the long list every year. One year I would like to read the entire long list. I don't know if that's going to be this year or not, because I'm not, my reading's not been great lately. But, um, yeah, let's go in and see what the books are. Every year I, I at least get one or two off the long list read. But I, I really enjoy following it. Like this entire week, I've just wanted to skip to Friday at 10 a.m. to see what the long list is. I love following book awards. Okay, here we go. The National Book Awards Long List Fiction. Looks like we've got When We Were Sisters by Fatima Oscar. I'm going to try to pull up descriptions as I read these off so I can read the descriptions afterwards. Shudder by Ramona Emerson. If I Survive You, Jonathan S. Coffery. The Rabbit Hutch, Tess Gunty. The Bird Catcher by Gail Jones. The Haunting of Haji Hotak and Other Stories by Jamil John Kochai. All This Could Be Different, Sarah Thankum Matthews. Uh, Nobody Gets Out Alive by Leigh Newman, Maria Maria and Other Stories by Maritza K. Rubio, and The Town of Babylon by Alejandro Varela. They put an ad right between those those last two titles, and I thought we were done at Maria Maria and Other Stories, and I scrolled down and saw, I have heard of... I've heard of The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. That's the only one of these I've even heard of. I'm surprised. I, I thought for sure we'd either see Trust by Hernan Diaz or Nightcrawling by Layla Motley on here. So I'm, I'm very surprised by that. Um, wow, yeah, this should be exciting. Gail Jones, I think she was the... I think she's the author of the Palmaries that was uh, a finalist for the Pulitzer. Um, okay, so I did not do good at pulling these up as I... Two short story collections. There's always two short story collections on the long list. That's usually one of the things I get read is one of the short story collections. <laughs> Nothing I read in, during the long list time ever makes the short list or wins. But uh, the short list, when's the short list announced? I know it's in October, but I don't know what date. I'll look that up when we're done. Um, okay, When We Were Sisters by Fatima Oscar. I have seen this cover before. Okay, in this heartrending lyrical debut work of fiction, Fatima Oscar traces the intense bond of three orphan siblings who, after their parents die, are left to raise one another. The youngest, Kasar, grapples with the incomprehensible loss of their parents as she also charts out her own understanding of excuse me, of gender. Aisha, the middle sister, spars with her crybaby younger sibling as she desperately tries to hold on to her sense of family in an impossible situation. And Noreen, the eldest, does her best in the role of sister-mother while also trying to create a life for herself on her own terms. As Kausar grows up, she must contend with the collision of her private and public worlds and choose whether to remain in the life of love, sorrow, and codependency that she's known or carve out a new path for herself. When We Were Sisters tenderly examines the bonds and fractures of sisterhood, names the perils of being three Muslim American girls alone against the world, and ultimately illustrates how those who've lost everything might still make homes in one another. That sounds interesting. I'm definitely interested in that. Okay, next. You know what? I want to check. I've seen this cover, so I want to check... The Center for Fiction uh, long list. 
uh, Center for Fiction first novel prize long list. I think we, when we were sisters, might be on that because I have seen I I have seen that cover. Uh, where's my list of that? Center for Fiction. Here we go. Yeah, when we were sisters. This comes out October eighteenth. This isn't even out yet. When we were sisters uh, by Fatima Oscar comes out October eighteenth and is is on the long list for the Center for Fiction first novel award. So. That might be after the shortlist is announced, when that actually comes out. So that's going to be hard for uh, hard for anybody who doesn't get uh, arcs of these books to uh, to read the entire long list. Okay, Shudder by Ramona Emerson. Uh, this blood-chilling debut set in New Mexico's Navajo Nation is equal parts gripping crime thriller, supernatural horror, and poignant portrayal of coming of age on the reservation. Rita to Todacini is a forensic photographer working for the Albuquerque Police Force. Her excellent photography skills have cracked many cases. She is almost supernaturally good at capturing details. In fact, Rita has been hiding a secret. She sees the ghosts of crime victims who point her toward the clues that other investigators overlook. As a lone portal back to the living as a lone portal back to the living for traumatized spirits, Rita is terrorized by nagging ghosts who won't let her sleep and who sabotage her personal life. Her taboo and psychologically harrowing ability was what drove her away from the Navajo reservation, where she was raised by her grandmother. It has isolated her from her friends and gotten her in trouble with the law, and now it might be what gets her killed. When Rita is sent to photograph the scene of a supposed suicide on a highway overpass, the dubious, discombobulated ghost of the victim, who insists she was murdered, latches on to Rita, forcing her on a quest for revenge against her killers. And when Rita finds herself in the crosshairs of one of Albuquerque's most dangerous cartels, written in sparkling, gruesome prose, Shudder is an explosive debut for one of crime fiction's most powerful new voices. Interesting. Don't normally see a book like this on the National Book Award long list. Interesting. Uh, I used to read a lot of books like this, but I, I don't so much anymore. And uh, this could be uh, this could be good. Okay, I could close an ad on every single one of these. All the, all these uh, the links from the, in the New Yorker article all link to Bookshop.org. Uh, pages and uh, there's an ad on every single one I go to <laughs> that I gotta close before I can read anything um, If I Survive You by Jonathan S. Coffery uh, okay I've seen this cover um, I just watched a video yesterday booktuber uh, I gotta find his name Brett Benner, he did a video yesterday, National Book Award Long List Guesses, and he included this book in his uh, in his guesses. And I've, so that's where I've seen this cover. So good job, Brett. <laughs> Brett. <laughs> uh, okay, so if I survive you. In the 1970s, Topper and Sonia flee to Miami as political violence consumes their native Kingston. But America, as the couple and their two children learn, is far from the promised land. Excluded from society as black immigrants, the family pushes on through Hurricane Andrew and later the 2008 recession, living in a house so cursed that the pet fish launches itself out of its own tank rather than stay. <laughs> wow. But even as things fall apart, the family remains motivated, often to its own detriment by what their younger son, Trelawney, calls the exquisite, racking compulsion to survive. Masterfully constructed, with heart and humor, the linked stories in Jonathan S. Coffery's If I Survive You. Okay, so this is actually ends up being a third story collection. It's just uh, interconnected, so it's being called a novel. Hmm, I don't, it doesn't say a novel on the cover. Okay, back to where I was. Uh, the linked stories in Jonathan's If I Survive You center on Trelawney as he struggles to carve out a place for himself amid financial disaster, racism, and flat-out bad luck. After a fight with Topper, himself reckoning with his failures as a parent and his longing for Jamaica, Trelawney claws his way out of homelessness through a series of odd, often hilarious jobs. Meanwhile, his brother, Delano, attempts a disastrous cash grab to get his kids back, and his cousin, Kuki looks for a father who doesn't want to be found. As each character searches for a foothold, they never forget the profound danger of climbing without a safety net. 
pulsing with vibrant lyricism and an inimitable style, sly commentary and contagious laughter. Escoffery's debut unravels what it means to be in between homes and cultures in a world at the mercy of capitalism and whiteness. With If I Survive You, Escoffery announces himself as a prodigious storyteller in a class of his own, a chronicler of American life at its most gruesome and hopeful. That sounds interesting. I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely interested in that. I'm not closing these as I go. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Next up, the Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. This one I have. This one I have heard of. Uh, Russell, I think the paper blog has talked about this book. I believe this one is also Center for Fiction. No, no, I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong. It is not a Center for Fiction first novel prize. It's just, I've just seen it on Russell's channel. Okay. The automobile industry has abandoned Vaca Vale, Indiana, leaving the residents behind, too. In a run-down apartment building on the edge of town, commonly known as the Rabbit Hutch, a number of people now reside quietly, looking for ways to live in a dying city. Here live four teenagers who have recently aged out of the state foster care system. Three boys and one girl. Blandine, who the Rabbit Hutch centers around. Hauntingly beautiful and unnervingly bright, Blandine is plagued by the structures, people, and places that not only failed her but actively harmed her. Now all Blandine wants is an escape, a true bodily escape like the mystics describe in the book she reads. Set across one week and culminating in a shocking act, the Rabbit Hutch chronicles a town on the brink desperate for rebirth. How far will its residents, especially Blandine, go to achieve it? Tess Gunty's The Rabbit Hutch is a gorgeous and provocative tale about the tensions between loneliness and community, entrapment and freedom. It announces a major new voice in fiction, one bristling with intelligence and vulnerability. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that one too. But so far, so far I'm liking this long list. Okay. The Birdcatcher, Gail Jones, yes, author of Palmares. So this is the uh, this is the author who is uh, a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize this year. Gail Jones, a novelist Toni Morrison discovered decades ago, and Tyari Jones, recently called her favorite writer, has been described as one of the great literary writers of the 20th century. Now, for the first time in over 20 years, Jones is publishing again. In the wake of her long-awaited fifth novel, Palmares, The Birdcatcher, is another singular achievement, a return to the circles of her National Book Award finalist, The Healing. Set primarily in, on the island of Ibiza, the story is narrated by the writer Amanda Wordlaw, whose closest friend, a gifted sculptor named Catherine... Catherine Sugar is repeatedly institutionalized for trying to kill a husband who never leaves her. The three form a quirky triangle on a whitewashed island. A study in black women's creative expression and the intensity of their relationships, this work from Jones show off her range and insight into the vicissitudes of all human nature, rewarding longtime fans and bringing her talent to a new generation of readers. I would say, just based off of her being a finalist for the Pulitzer, that I would probably say this already stands a good chance of making the short list, just just on report card alone. Um, that does sound, and I, and I do have Palmieri's uh, that I haven't read yet, so we'll see which one I get to first. If I if I decide I want to try and read this long list, it'll probably be this one. Close the ad. <laughs> the Haunting of Haji Hotak and Other Stories by Jamil John Kochai. A luminous new collection of stories from a young writer who has brought his culture's rich history, mythology, and lyricism to American letters. Sandra Sisners. Penn Hemingway. Uh, this is all. Is this all quotes? No, okay. Penn Hemingway finalist Jamil John Kochai breathes life into his contemporary Afghan characters, moving between modern-day Afghanistan and the Afghan, Afghan diaspora in America. And these arresting stories verging on both comedy and tragedy, often starring young characters whose bravado is matched by their tenderness. Kochai, is once again, Kochai once again captures a singular resonant voice, an American teenager raised by old-world Afghan storytellers. 
In playing Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, a young man's video game experience turns into a surreal exploration of his own father's memories of war and occupation. Set in Kabul, Return to Sender follows two married doctors driven by guilt to leave the U.S. and care for their fellow Afghans, even when their own son disappears. A college student in the U.S. and a college student in the U.S. in Hungry Ricky Daddy starves himself in protest of Israeli violence against Palestine. And in the title story, The Haunting of Haji Hotek, we learn the story of a man condemned, codenamed Haji from the perspective of a government surveillance worker who becomes entrenched in the immigrant's fa immigrant family's life. The Haunting of Haji Hotek and Other Stories is a moving exploration of characters grappling with the ghosts of war and displacement, and one that speaks to the immediate political landscape we reckon with today. That sounds like a good story collection. I'm not huge on reading on, on story collections. I don't read a ton of them. Um, but a couple years ago, uh, long-listed, I believe it was short-listed too, um, Secret Lives of Church Ladies became one of my, my was my favorite book that I read that year. Not a, you know from coming from the National Book Award. That's usually the only time I read story collections is when they're long listed for the National Book Award. My trouble with story collections is I don't ever remember the stories. It takes a really good story collection to really stick with me. And and Secret Lives of Church Ladies was that. So so I'm def I'll, I'll we'll see what the other story collection is. But if I only get to one of the story collections so far, this looks like it's going to be the one. All this could be different. Sarah Thankum Matthews. From a brilliant new voice comes an electrifying novel of a young immigrant building a life for herself. A warm, dazzling, and profound saga of queer love, friendship, work, and precar precarity in the 21st, in 21st century America. Graduating into the long mow of an American recession, Sneha is one of the fortunate ones. She's moved to Milwaukee for an entry-level corporate job that, grueling as it may be, excuse me, is the key that unlocks every door. She can pick up the tab at dinner with her new friend Tig, get her college buddy Tom hired alongside her, and send money to her parents back in India. She begins dating women, soon developing a burning crush on Marina, a beguiling and beautiful dancer who always seems just out of reach. But before long, trouble arrives. Painful secrets rear their heads. Jobs go off the rails. Eviction looms. Evictions loom. Sneha struggles to be truly close and open with anybody, even as her friendships deepen, even as she throws herself headlong into a dizzying romance with Marina. It's then that Tig begins to draw up a radical solution to their problems, hoping to save them all. A beautiful and capacious novel rendered in singular, unforgettable prose. All this could be different is a wise, tender, and riveting group portrait of young people forging love and community amidst struggle, and a moving story of one immigrant's journey to make her home in the world. Again, it sounds... This sounds like kind of right up my alley right now. Um, past few years, I've really gotten into uh, books set in India and about Indian characters. Um, I'm a little uh, not woken up yet, too. I just got out of bed like an hour and a half ago. like <laughs> So uh, about an hour before this long list, was, and I'm still kind of waking up. I just finished breakfast like the minute before this was this list was posted. Um, so if I seem a little uh, vacant at times that's that's why i'm my my brain's still catching up with the rest of my body <laughs> um okay nobody gets out alive stories by Leigh newman this is the other Stuart story collection set in newman's home state of alaska nobody gets out alive is an exhilarating collection about women struggling to survive not just grizzly bears and charging moose but the raw legacy of their marriages and families alongside stories set in today's last frontier rife with suburban sprawl global warming and opioid addiction Newman delves into remote 
Newman delves into remote wilderness of the 1970s and 80s, bringing to life young girls and single moms in search of a wilder, freer, more adventurous America. The final story takes place in a railroad camp in 1915 where an outspoken heiress stages an elaborate theatrical production in order to, in order to seduce the wife of her husband's employer. Rich with wit and wisdom, showing us that love, marriage, and family are always a bigger and more perilous adventure than backcountry trips, Kirkus Review's starred review. These keenly observed stories prove there are some questions about love, heartbreak, and the meaning of home. That can't be outrun, no matter how hard we try. Nobody gets out alive as a dazzling foil to the adventures of to the adventure narratives of old. Okay, that sounds that sounds interesting. It doesn't sound as interesting to me as the other short story collection. Um so if I only get to one of the short story collections, like I said, it's probably going to be, where was it? Oh, I, did I close? No. The Haunting of Haji Hotek and Other Stories. So that would probably be the, the first short story collection I'll start. Because I usually always do start one of the short story collections pretty much right as soon as I can get my hands on it. Because I can read, um, like with Secret Lives of Church Ladies, I read one story before I went to sleep every night. Um... This this will probably be the if I get to it one. Uh, oh, three short story. Yeah, three short story collections plus plus a book of uh, interconnected stories. Because I just pulled this next one up and it's Maria Maria and other stories. How did I not? How did that not register when I was reading the list? Oh, because Nobody Gets Out Alive does not say stories after it in the New Yorker article. That's why. Okay. But when you go to it, it's Nobody Gets Out Alive stories. They didn't add the stories to the New Yorker article. So there's three short story collections plus an interconnected story collection. It's basically four story collections uh, on the long list this year. That's interesting. It's usually only two. Um, Maria Maria and Other Stories by Maritza K. Rubio. Set against the tropics and megacities of the Americas, Maria Maria takes inspiration from wild creatures, terra, tarot, and the porous borders between life and death. Motivated by love and its inverse, grief, the characters who inhabit these stories no negotiate boldly with nature to cast their desired ends. As the enigmatic community college professor in Brugia, in Brugia for Beginners reminds us, there's always a price for conjuring in darkness. You won't always know what, what it is until payment is due. This commitment drives the disturbingly faithful widow in Tejuka, who promises to bury her husband's head in the rich dirt of the jungle, and the sisters in Moksha, who are tempted by a sleek obsidian dagger once held by a vampiric idol. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm interested. Um... But magic isn't limited to the women who wield it. As Rubio so brilliantly elucidates, animals are powerful magicians too. Subversive pigeons and hungry jaguars are called upon in tunnels, and a lonely little girl runs free with resurrected with a resurrected saber-toothed tiger in a burial. <clears throat> Excuse me. A colorful catalog of gal a colorful catalog of gallery exhibits from animals and therapy is featured in art show, including the almost philandering fox who longs after the red pelt of another and the recently rehabilitated paranoid peacocks brimming with sharp wit and ferocious female intuition these stories bubble over into the titular no into titular novella maria maria a tropogoth family drama set in a reimagined california rainforest that explores the legacies of three marias and possibly all marias Writing in prose so lush it threatens to creep off the page, Rubio emerges as an ineffable new voice in contemporary short fiction. Okay, that one sounds interesting. So that, I have to, actually I might have to decide Haunting of Haji Hotek and Other Stories or Maria Maria first. I'm still thinking Haunting of ha Haji Hotek and Other Stories though. That one really, uh, that one kind of really spoke to me as I was reading the but so did this one, so so we'll have to see. Uh, the Town of Babylon, Alejandro Varela. Haunting, sublime, solemn, and true. Robert, oh, this is a quote from Robert 
Jones Jr., author of The Prophets. Uh, quote from Disha, uh, an intense austere meditation on race, family, class, love, and friendship from Disha Filia, author of Secret Lives of the Church Ladies. So that 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 resonates with me right there because I, I I absolutely love the Secret Life and Secret Life of Church Ladies. I'm waiting for Disha Filia to release something else because whatever she releases, I will pre-order it and I will read it and yeah. In this contemporary debut novel, an intimate portrait of queer, racial, and class identity, An Andreas, a gay Latinx professor, returns to his suburban hometown in the wake in the wake of his husband's infidelity. There he finds himself with no excuse not to attend his 20-year high school reunion and hesitantly begins to reconnect with people he used to call friends. Over the next few weeks, while caring for his aging parents and navigating the neighborhood where he grew up, Andreas falls into old habits with friends he thought he'd left behind. Before long, he unexpectedly becomes entangled with his first love and is forced to tend to past wounds. Captivating and poignant, a modern coming-of-age story about the essential nature of community. The Town of Babylon is a page-turning novel about young love and a close examination of our social systems and the toll they take, and the toll they take when they fail us. Again, that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm into this long list. Um, four, three definite short story collections with. I've, if I survive you being interconnected stories, it's not it doesn't say a novel like you know how most novel if I survive you a novel, it doesn't say that on the cover. So I don't know if this is being considered a story collection or if it's being considered. Okay, at the top it says if I survive you is a collection of connected short stories that reads like a novel. Okay, so four short story collections on the long list this year. That's double the amount that they're usually is I, this sounds like we could see a short story collection win the national book award this year which we haven't seen since 2015 fortune smiles by adam johnson and before that and and that's been the first time this century that a short story collection has won the national book award so we Str str looks like a strong chance we could see a short story collection win the National Book Award this year with four on the long list. I would guess that at least two are going to end up being on the short list. I'd be surprised. I'd be with four on the long list. I'd be surprised if two didn't make the short list. And the short list comes out. Let me pull up the National Book Foundation site. Uh, uh current awards year there's a key dates current okay so the finalists are announced the shortlist will be announced October 4th so definitely not definitely before when we were sisters even comes out we when we were sisters comes out October 18th which also happens to be my father's birthday um And the award is announced on November 16th. This is, my, this is my one gripe with the National Book Award. Is they don't give a lot of time between the long list being announced and the short list being announced. So there's not a lot. If you want to read the entire long list before the, uh, before the short list is announced, you got to cram 10 books into about two and a half to three weeks. So I know I know Russell manages it every year. I don't know how he does it, but I know he also reads fast and combines with audio and but he he, he gets it done. In my readings pace this year, that's definitely not gonna happen. Um I won't I will even if I was reading at my fastest paces, I probably would not get this entire long list read before October 4th. I mean, that's almost less than half a month away. So, um, I just wish they would give more time. Because, like, like the Booker, there was plenty of time. I could have read that entire long list if I wanted, if I had wanted to before the shortlist was announced. A lot of people did. You know, Women's Prize, as long as you average two books a week... You can, you can get that long list read 
by the time the shortlist comes out. This this is a this is challenging. Um, now between the finalists being in between the shortlist and the announcement, you got another almost month and a half from October fourth to November sixteenth. So to give you more time to read, you get more time to read the short list than you get to read the long list. Um, but I know they're, that's not the things they're thinking. They're not thinking about that, but it is something that maybe they should, especially, especially now with booktube and bookstagram and book talk and the way books are talked about now online and all, and all, and, and all the people who, who try to promote these awards and, it would it would give these books, especially the long list of books, b better breathing space and better better exposure. If they gave more time for us, has has I, I want to say book influencer, but I'm I'm definitely not a book influencer. I'm just a guy who occasionally talks about books uh, on a YouTube channel. I'm definitely not an influencer, um, but other people are like like Russell. I would definitely call him an influencer. Give you know people like that more time to really get these books out there and promote them. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I do wish the National Book Award got more booktube attention, and that's why I'm making this video. And while well, I'll probably do a short list video, and I'm thinking about uh, when I can get my hand on some of the books, doing a try a chapter uh, video of whatever I can get my hands on. Um, yeah, I want to I want to start contributing to getting the National Book Award out, excuse me, out there on BookTube because it just doesn't get the attention that the Booker and the Women's Prize get, and I think that's a shame. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 kind of into this long list. This this seems like a different long list than we've seen in past years. Like no, other than Gail Jones, no really like eight debut eight debut novelists, eight de eight debut authors on this. I don't know. I know Dale Jones is definitely not, and I don't, but I don't know who the other non-debut author is. Um, that's a debut. I know that's a debut because it's on the Center for Fiction list. Uh, this is a debut. Rabbit Hutch, I believe, is a debut. Yeah, that's a debut. That's a bird, bird catcher. That's Gail Jones. That's not a debut. That might that one doesn't exp, haunting of Haji doesn't explicitly state debut. Uh, from a brilliant new voice, so all this could be different to debut. Nobody gets out alive. Debut story collection. Maria Maria and other stories. Uh. New Voice and the Town of Babylon. Okay, this one doesn't explicitly state debut. So let me click on this author's name and see what comes up. Okay. Uh, this is a debut novel, though. But it's not a debut book. He has a and Alejandro Varela has a uh, short story collection, too. Let's go back to... Uh, which one was it? I don't remember which one it was. Okay, well, I'll figure that out later. But, uh, yeah, eight debut authors. That's insane. I don't think I've ever seen that many debut authors on an award other than the Center for Fiction First Novel Prize. Um, I'm surprised, I'm actually surprised that there is not more 
crossover between with so many debut authors on the on this long list i'm surprised there's not more crossover with the center for fiction first novel prize but there's not only only when we were sisters interesting so okay so when we were sisters let's just look at releases i know is comes out after the long list uh shutter is available now if I Survive You is available now. The Rabbit Hutch I know is available now. Bird Catcher, September 13th. So that just came, that came out this week. Haunting of Haji Hotak, July 19th. So that's already out. All This Could Be Different is currently out. Uh, Nobody Gets Out Alive, that is also currently out. Maria Maria and Other Stories. That is currently out. The Town of Babylon. I'm doing this because the uh, the the guidelines are um, it has to be released by uh, November 1st by October 30th. I think it's either October th October 30th or November 30th. Um, so there could potentially be more books that are not released yet. Um, March 22nd for the town of Babylon. So, yeah, When We Were Sisters is the only book that has not released yet. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see what I can get my hands on. Um, and then maybe I'll do a try a chapter video with what I can get my hands on. Um, anyway, that's it for this video. Um, let me know if any of these sound interesting to you. Do you uh, enjoy the National Book Award? Do you like to follow uh, the long list and that? And uh, are you going to try to get to any of these books? Uh, let me know down in the comments, and I will see you all in the next one.